Now there's more trauma for Emmerdale's live tonight. She's still struggling in the aftermath of last month's big explosion. I'm a gambling man, Liv. I thrive on chances. Move. Get off! This is my lucky day. No! If you leave me, you will know what you did. And I won't be sorry. No pulse. I didn't know what to do, Owen. I want to help you. Just get out of my face! Live. Leave me alone! I'll stop drinking. Okay? I'll stop. And we can make this right. That's not food, Mum. I know it's not food. We can have a celebration. You haven't won a what? Oh, see, she's trying so hard. Isabel Seal, who plays Liv, joins me now. Isabel, lovely to see you. Really good to see you. Hi. She's a poor wee soul. She's in a terrible downward spiral, isn't she? I know. It's so sad to see because, you know, it's just the aftermath of Paul's death. It's not her fault, but, you know, she's just one of those people who I think blames herself and that's really, really difficult to see. I know she's got all this guilt going on and then, of course, trying to trying to get off the drink um, and it's been impossible and her health is in danger. I mean, she really is. It's, it's been a really tough time. Yeah, it has been. I think um, the re like her being reunited with her mum is just not the one, I think, you know, I think she wants it to be a good relationship and she knows deep down it's not and it's really sad for her. She's searching for that connection and she's just not going to find it and it's, it's getting quite dangerous at this point. It really is, but I just wonder, Isabel, you know, a young actress trying to play a drunk, drunk acting must be, must be actually really hard because the temptation is to kind of go a wee bit over the top. You have to get it, you know, it has to be convincing and um, you have to go for it. So, I mean, do you just study other people that are tiddly? I did do this storyline when I was like 15 or 16 and I had no idea what I was doing, so I think... You know, I've just, like, watched people, like, a bit, and I don't know, I do a few spins before I go on. But, you know, it's difficult because there's a fine line between it being way over the top and sort of underplayed so that you can't really tell. And everyone, I feel like, has an opinion on, um, like, how, how drunk acting should be played. And it's just a bit nerve-wracking, but hopefully I'm doing all right. I think so. Well, it, sadly and tragically, you, you've had to have a lot of practice because of this poor wee character, that's for sure. Now, we've got a wee preview yeah. tonight. This is, this is Aaron, who I know that you're very close to in real life, but this is him talking about poor Liv. Let's have a look. This is tonight. Have you had any reply from that last video? No word. She's got a lot to straighten out in her head, too. Gives you more time to work out our best to deal with her when she comes back. If she comes back. She'll be back. How can you be so sure? Well, that's the thing. If she comes back, that's it. Now, Danny Miller, who, of course, plays uh, Liv's half-brother, you're really close in real life, aren't you? Yeah, we're really good friends. I think I think when someone comes into the show and they're new, it's really nice for them to have a mentor. I think everyone sort of naturally finds a mentor, you know, someone that they work with quite a lot. Danny, thankfully, was mine mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, just taught me everything and just been such a good friend to me. You know, the entire five years I've been there on and off screen in work, out of work, and yeah, we are literally besties. <laughs> Isn't that lovely? That's one of the real joys about doing something like, like Emmerdale, um, is that you see people, you get really close with them, because oftentimes when you're acting, you get really close to people, and then, oh, you probably don't see them again until maybe you meet up years later in another job. But you all get on, and you know that with Emmerdale, you all get on so, so well, and, and you two have got a really special bond. Are you not going to be an auntie soon, I think? I am. I am going to be. I'm so excited about that. I cannot tell you. I, I was so excited when the magazine was coming out because um, I'd known a little bit before and I was just like, oh, I love it for him. He really suits being a dad. And I'm just, yeah, I'm really, really excited that he's finally at that chapter. It's great. It really is. And, and how you can make your, your work, you know, like um, he can fit. Because we always ask, we always ask women who have babies about how they manage to fit, you know, to, 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 to sort of work and, and do that. But with him too, you know, because of the hours that you work, it can be quite intense, but then you can get a little bit of time off and he can just, he can just be dad. Yeah, I think it's quite nice. I mean, we get really, we worked really hard for like, you know, two or three months and sometimes it's every day, all day, seven till seven. And then you sort of get a nice middle part where it's like three days a week and then 
you know, you can be quiet for a few months as people who haven't come back to work yet from, from COVID and, you know, they're just having the time off. It all depends on the storyline and, you know, whether the characters are used or not. And it's quite nice to have, um, to work really hard and focus on a storyline and then have that time off as well. It's really nice balance. I, I really enjoy it. No, of course. And you also, what you really enjoy is you like to, you're a singer-songwriter. You like to do that. That's, <laughs> that's something that, that I guess is, is a lovely way to de-stress as well. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've always, I've always sung and always played the piano and, you know, I've, I've always enjoyed that. And I only started writing music when I was 16, so um, it never really felt like something that I could actually do because I'd always wanted to be a songwriter. And then when I started writing tunes, I was like, oh, this is, um, I could start releasing these and I could actually do this alongside Emmerdale, which, I, you know, I'm really grateful to be able to do and hopefully, um, Hopefully there's more to come with that, yeah. Oh, so good for you. And also, I have to say, congratulations all throughout this pandemic. Your dad is a hairstylist. That must be <laughs> fantastic. I mean, really, because there he is. It's like you, you're not going to have the terrible lockdown hair that we all had. So that was good. Wow, he's going to love that he's on it. He's going <laughs> to love that you've used that picture. I can't even tell you. No, he's great. I mean, I, you know, he's always got my hair. I've never had the... The stressful situation where most yes. people go into a salon and come out crying because they hate what they've got. You know, I've really been, been very lucky in that sense. And, oh, it's good. you know, he's great at his job and he just chats away all day. Oh. So, yeah. Well, it's so good to talk to you, my love. And uh, we'll wait and see what happens to poor old Liv. But thank you for talking to us. Great to see you. And Emma Dale, of course, much. continues 7 o'clock on ITV. Don't forget, you can watch full episodes of Lorraine on the ITV Hub and all the best clips, compilations and playlists right here on our channel. Just subscribe now and you'll never miss an upload. Click here to watch another video similar to this one or click here to head to our channel's homepage to explore all of our exciting videos.